Okay, we've returned to Tobit, and we're into uh, hot off the press from last week when we were doing the canon. Looked at the canon from a couple different directions through the uh, Old Testament, New Testament, and the Apocrypha, and we're going to bump into the Apocrypha again. Uh, let's see. I think it might be tonight when we get. Uh, let's see. Where is it? I think and we will we'll bump into the Apocrypha again if we get into, I think it's in 13. Um, if we don't, well, then we'll we'll catch up with it later on. So uh, we're going to begin with 12. Who wants to... Oh, no, it's right here. The Apocrypha is right here. Okay, so who wants to read from 12 to start? We're going to go from... We'll do it in, in clumps. Uh, one through five, stopping before six. Okay. When the wedding celebration was ended, Tobit called his son, Tobias, and said to him, My child, see to paying the wages of the man who went with you and give, give him a bonus as well. He replied, Father, how much shall I pay him? It would do no harm to give him half the possessions brought back with me. For he has led me back to you safely. He cured my wife. He brought the money back with me, and he healed you. How much extra shall I give him as a bonus? Tobit said, he deserves my child to receive half of all that he brought back. So Tobit called him and said, take for your wages half of all that you brought back and farewell. Okay. So, if you remember back in, in uh, chapter 5, verse 15, when Raphael is being hired or been offered the job of going along with uh, Tobias, he said, for each day, I will give you a drachma as wages, as well as expenses for you and for my son. So go with my son, and I will even add a bonus for your wages. So remember, a drachma was the standard for a day's wage. It was a, a nice, it wasn't It wasn't bad, it was a good wage for one day. So he was paying him the going rate for one day with the promise of bonus, a little bonus, you know, an extra drachma for every three days or something. Uh, and here we have this amazing, amazing turnabout of generosity and thanksgiving. Um, we're we're talking about half, <laughs> right? Half of everything that he's brought back. And he's brought back a lot. So he won't be hurting when he gives up half. But still, that's half. That's, that's a lot. Uh, but his father agrees. He says, should I give him half? And his father says, yes, you should give him half. So here we are. Tobias called Raphael and said, take as your wages half of all that you have brought back and farewell. So what a uh, an example of, of generosity and thanksgiving for his help along the way. And not just of uh, uh, Tobias, but of, to of Tobit as well. There was no dissension between the two of them, like I just did, say, well, that's a lot of money, a half. Um, Dad was... That was right there, saying this is the the greater the greater gift. Isn't that the truth of it for Tobias and Tobit? Their their giving, their generosity to Raphael is the greater gift. They've received, they've received the the gift of generosity, and that's a great gift to have. And they've kind of not lost sight of the fact that. Here and here and here, there things could have been very bad, except for you know, right. um, to wouldn't have made it anywhere with the fish, and then there's the wife, and then there's the you know, um, and they haven't lost sight of that. I'm I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm smiling I have to this like thing dog my dog just came barging in and is nudging. <laughs> Photobomb by a dog. Steve's sister has that same problem with her little cocker. Franklin apparently is an internet star. There we go. All right. Who wants to read six? We'll read six through ten. I'll do that. Okay. 
Then Raphael took them both aside and said, Bless God, utter his praise before all the living for all the favors he has given you. Bless and extol his name. Proclaim before all men the deeds of God as they deserve and never tire of giving him thanks. It is right to keep the secret of a king, yet right to reveal and publish the works of God. Thank him worthily. Do what is good and no evil can befall you. Prayer with fasting and alms with the right conduct are better than riches with iniquity. Better to practice alms giving than to hoard up gold. Alms giving saves from death and purges every kind of sin. Those who give alms have their fill of days. Those who commit sin and do evil bring harm on themselves. Okay, so we brought so what we started in the beginning is brought is brought to, to the explanation here in this exhortation as it moves forward. Um, they just offered uh, half of all they own, right? All, or half of everything was brought back. Um, and now they have this exhortation from Raphael saying, um, you, you found the secret. You've got the, you've got the method. This is the gift that you've been given. Alms giving is the secret that will set you free. You know, look at all these things you could be doing, but this is the heart, the heart of it. So he's telling him, yes, this was, it's a, it's a weird, it's kind of an interesting thing because he's claiming the almsgiving. You know, saying, this is almsgiving. So I, I, he's claiming it and, and complimenting them on it, even as it's a gift to him. Okay, uh, 11. Hmm, how far are we going to go on that? Well, let's just go to the end, 11 to 20. It's the great reveal. Yeah, 11 to 22. Who wants to read that one? I'll read it. Okie dokie. I will now tell you the whole truth. I will conceal nothing at all from you. I have already said to you, a king's secret, it is prudent to keep, but the works of God are to be made known with due honor. I can now tell you that when you, Tobit, and Sarah prayed, it was I who presented and read the record of your prayer before the glory of the Lord, and I did the same thing when you used to bury the dead. When you did not hesitate to give up and leave your dinner in order to go and bury the dead, I was sent to put you to the test. At the same time, however, God commissioned me to heal you and your daughter-in-law, Sarah. I am Raphael, one of the seven angels who entered and served before the glory of the Lord. Stricken with fear, the two men fell to the ground. But Raphael said to them, no need to fear, you are safe. Thank God, now and forever. As for me, when I come to you, when I came to you, it was not out of any favor on my part, but because it was God's will. So continue to thank him every day. Praise him with song. Even though you watched me eat and drink, I did not really do so. What you were seeing was a vision. So now get up from the ground and praise God. Behold, I am about to ascend to him who sent me. Write down all these things that have happened to you. When Raphael ascended, they rose to their feet and could no longer see him. They kept thanking God and singing his praises, and they continued to acknowledge these marvelous deeds, which he had done when the angel of God appeared to them. <laughs> yes, the great reveal. It's Raphael, one of the seven. Woohoo! Yeah. All right. So we've got uh, a king's secret should be kept a secret, but one must declare the works of God with due honor. That's a great line. That's a great line. Uh, really putting the um, what the the uh, emphasis here is on uh, a king's secret should be kept a secret. So this is the earthly truth, the earthly reality that we've got this this need or this necessity of of holding things secret, of holding things back, or at least we believe we have the necessity to do that. And so it's that game that we play. And sometimes it works out for us and sometimes it doesn't. But he said, in all cases, without fail, at all times, God is God gets the glory. And when God gets the glory, that has to be shared. So, so, so last, last week you were talking about, uh, you know, when... Uh, when the apocrypha got included and all that, yeah. Um, what 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 this it's it seems to me that the the Gnostics cannot have this uh, 
can, can't have can't have this book because this go this flies directly in contra or directly contrary to what they say in the secret knowledge thing and all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so do do Gnostics uh, acknowledge the the apocrypha? Yeah, well, there are different different um, there are different groups of Gnostics along the way. I mean, there are so many different cults that are just Gnostic in their way. The only thing Gnostic means is hidden or secret. So it it says that my group has a secret, uh, has a hidden something. You know who's who's been accused of being Gnostical Gnostics for a long time are the Mormons, because unless you're a Mormon, they you don't know what to do. They they've kept they keep it a secret. You have to be one of the in group to to know what to do. So it's really a Gnostic faith practice. So any one of these little uh, religious pseudo-Christian groups that were along in the time, that were Gnostic, all claim to have some secret knowledge by which you would, you know, know like get, <laughs> that you would either get to heaven faster or, you know, get out of purgatory or, um, you know, I don't know, get rich quick. Since <laughs> like our our internet evangelists today say, pray yourself into into fortunes. Um, so it may not have been that the content of the book, this book, is certainly doesn't proclaim a Gnosticism. If Raphael is saying, uh, proclaim this loud and loud and loud, although it is it is a it is a tale with a, a very strong Gnostic component because Raphael's keeping this secret and misleading everybody as to who he is. And it's only but, uh, Raphael, Raphael says, you know, keep king secrets, but mm -hmm. um, tell the glory of God. Tell the glory of right. God. So um, that 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 basically is counter to any to any any kind of Gnosticism, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's um the story itself has got this big Gnostic component built into the front of it. Up until this point, Raphael's complete involvement was Gnostic. It was secret. There was no. There was no, um, in fact, the whole journey was dependent upon this great secret, this hidden information or hidden reality. And it, if, it could have been, if not for this proclamation, that nobody would ever know that they had been actually, you know, saved by a divine force. So at this point in the story, him saying, tell everybody the glory of God. Yes, exactly. That's against the Gnostics uh, saying that the glory of God, if that's the secret that the Gnostics want to keep. You don't know what the secret is based on the group. So let me put it this way. This book could be the secret. Let's say we have our own Gnostic group and we have the book of Tobit and nobody else does. And there are lessons in here about being married and about angels among us and about being blessed and about, you know, kind of godly incantations to make people well and, and some really, really, really important um, co uh, commentaries on living a good life but nobody can read this but us and you have to be part of our group to read this book and learn this wonderful stuff so that's the secret the secret for that group would not be this what's in the story it would be this the having the story itself as my as our thing that you guys can't read unless you join our group so we we make this story the centerpiece that says that the that as as our group grows, we say that this story is the hinge pin to understand the gospels, or it's the hinge pin to enact the gospels, or it's the the new way of understanding the Old Testament and the purpose of God and the interaction of God in the group. But you can't read this book unless you're with us. So it, I don't know. It's pretty fun. Let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it may not be the story itself, although this story does have a real big component of a, a Gnostic component in it. It could just be having the book because you know gnostic groups uh you don't know what the secret is you know it, it could be one one gnostic group has got one secret and another gnostic group has got another secret you don't know there's no way to know the only thing that keeps, keeps them in common is that you have to join to find out what it is that's it and usually you have to pay god yeah Think of, uh, think of, I mean, this horrible example, but think of Joan, uh, Jim Jones, Jonestown. You know, you had to join his group. You got, you got the message. You got the big, the big um, broad cloth general message that he had to give. But then to get the specific message, the one that's the really important one, you had to join. 
and you had to give him all your stuff and you had to make all these commitments to him and dedicate your entire life to him and then come away with him. And only then could you learn the secret stuff. And when they do all the interviews of people before the terrible, horrible Jonestown massacre, basically, um, they wouldn't tell. Like you go back and look at it, they would the people say, Yeah, they'd say, What do you do? What are you doing in the compound? What's happening? Like, oh yeah, you know, we we love each other, you know. They they don't tell because that's the secret. If you're not part of the group, you can't know what the secret is. So all all cults do that. They're all Gnostic. All right, so we've got Raphael. He's let the he's he's let the cat out of the bag here. And uh here we go. I am Raphael, one of the seven angels who stand to serve before the Lord God. Okay. That is um, how many angels, this is a quiz, how many angels are, are named and, and known to you in the, in the Holy Scriptures? Three. What are they? My Bible says three. Oh, oh. <laughs> who are the three? I mean, in Gabriel, Michael... <laughs> Gabriel, Michael. There are the two that I... That, and the, Okay, and then there's the cherubim, Sarah, from that whole... They're not named. Isn't there, some, isn't there an Azera somebody? Yeah. Azera fail or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> but they're not... That's not in scripture. Is, the only, the only Satan two, is fallen angel. Say, Satan, yes. There it is. So you've got the only three uh, archangels that are in scripture are Lucifer, Michael, and Gabriel. That's it. So, but oh, here there's, okay. there's, so age, so, uh, so Lucifer is not counted anymore among the eight. So there's only seven. But he so, is named. But we're missing, so he's named. But we're, So we're missing five. We're missing five and we don't know who they are. Well, well, now we know one more. Raphael, he's right here in the book of Tobit. May not be the Old Testament, but it's something. And then there's another angel that's that is spoken about in the book of the Ninja Turtles. And there's, yeah, there's Donatello, and then there's yes. <laughs> Yeah, Donatello and Leonardo and Leonardo, Leonardo and it's in the Raphael. The I, I think it's first Esdras <laughs> has got a list of books. And Esdras <laughs> is a is a book that we might, if we ever get around to it. Interesting. There's three books, but there's really only one book. But you know, blah blah. blah. It's a it's a, a conflation of a whole bunch of stories, and the beginning of the book of Esdras is uh, what's called the story of the Watchman. And in the in the book of Genesis, there is this little tiny passage about uh, the angels having sex with mortal women, and having these giant, ba giant men. Yeah, babies. the the Nephilim. Nephilim. Yes. Yeah. The Nephilim. And then and then it says and 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 God got rid of them. That's it. It's like three verses and it's all over. So what the book of Ezra is is somebody said, "Man, <laughs> that's just crying out for a detail. That's a story that needs to be told." So this goes into that. The first uh, first installment, the Watchman, talks all about uh, the the naughty angels coming down and, and having sex with women. And the Nephilim Niffle, being born and growing up and being these giant people who like to eat human beings, crunch on them while they're watching TV. Sounds sort of Greek. Oh, yeah. It was all really. So there's the only place where there's a, a, the naming of another angel is there. But we don't have the names of the other ones. We don't know who they are. Or do we? <laughs> Let's just take a look and see. Hang on. <laughs> really? Here are some renditions of the seven archangels. Now, I want you to, to, to enjoy this and pay close attention to um, the way that they... So here are the angels, Uriel, Shamel, uh, um, Gabriel, Michael, Zadquel, Jophel, and Raphael. So there's Raphael. He's green. You got Michael. Oh, look with the fish. Blue. Why, yeah. are, why are some of them saints and some of them not? Yeah, because the ones that are saints are the ones that came to earth and spoke with people and were involved in in a one on one businesses with with human beings. So they are they have earned the, the title. Who's the angel who came? I got to look at judges. OK, so you ready. So you got a good look at these guys, right? Or women or whatever. They're not either. Right They're They're not men or women. 
they don't have a gender. That's angels are genderless. Or and, unless you're talking about the naughty angels who came down and made the Nephilim. Okay, <laughs> ready? Ready? Here you go. Oops. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, different rendition. <laughs> I I find this one really interesting because they they look like thirteen year old girls to me. And look, it's only five of them here. They're they're kind of out of the picture over here. Oh, they got cut off. Oh. And look, they got little cherubs above them, like little cherub heads holding those people up. So here's Michael. He's really something with his blue on, and he's got the boots and all like this. They really do look like young young ladies to me, don't they? All right, here we go. Oh, I got too many. Oh, here we go. Archangels. There's another set. Michael here again. He's the he's the bold one. Look, he's got his spear on Satan's neck. And then you have more. Now, again, if you look, they look that kind of um not male or female. And only one of them has a has a kid, though. Yes, little one right here. There's a story behind that. So here's the here. I'm not gonna we're not gonna belabor this because these are all prayers. But this is um, the 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 names of them and their special uh, their special position. So here's Gabriel. He's the special messenger of God. Okay. Let's see. And then Raphael is the healer and the guide for Christian pilgrim. We know where that came from, don't we? That's Tobias. And now we got Uriel, and he is the archangel of Wait justice. A Wednesday? <laughs> yeah. Wednesday is a terrible time, hump day, you know. Make it over that one. <laughs> now you've got here. Now here's the name of the new guy. We don't know this for uh, the archangel Sealtel, the archangel of worship and contemplation. And the first day is the bearer of God's merciful love. Oh, and there's one Angel for every day of the week. Barky, which one was Thursday? Uh, Barky, that was there. We go, Seal Teal. Okay, guardian uh, worship of uh, contemplation. You have Barky, he's the guardian and provider of children of God. That's the one you saw with the little kid, okay. and Michael. The prince of he the heavens. It's Sunday. Ooh -wee. Yeah, he gets the big one. He's, he's lucky. All right. So that's what they are now. Now you got all that memorized, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, How come Michael is the, is the military one? Oh, uh, because he was the one that uh, uh, he was the one that was fighting. He fought the he fought Satan with us with a spear and put it on his neck. Okay. He gets to wear the armor, or does he? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here comes more. Okay, it's another one of the archangels. Look at that. And you got Jesus in the oh, middle. Oh, no, it's Greek to me. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's got yeah, all it's the sort of Eastern, Eastern Orthodox, isn't it? Yes, yes. And they, and they look three, they, four, five, six, seven, notice, that, eight. notice that they're all the same. Oh, there's nine of them. Their faces are almost identical. Well, in actuality. Yeah, they just have different colored. The, the well, arch, well, yes. there's, there's a different number of them. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, oh. six, seven, eight, nine. So that's 10? One, two, three, four, five, six. These aren't archangels. The ones at the bottom down there. Um, three of them down there. There are 11, actually, not just seven, unless you're talking about it, just depends on who you're talking to. Okay, so here's a different. Oh, boy, it gets worse. Here they are now. Now things are looking a little different, I think, because it looks to me like this guy right here and this guy right here uh, are guys. And then you look like this one looks more like a woman and this one more like a woman and then a woman and then a woman. So now we're getting real, we're kind of genderizing, aren't we? Well, yeah. th these these are, are made during the Middle Ages, right? Yeah, all different times. So these are these are windows. These are copies of windows that are in churches, a church. Yeah. Okay. I don't see that. I mean, it looks like some of them have on dresses and some of them don't, but they've... Um, well, if, if we tr if we try to put that, we're looking we're falling into the same trap that the uh, Da Vinci Code fell into, where they they said that John was obviously a female because right. he was looking over the shoulder of Jesus. Yeah, but what? Wait, <laughs> here you go. Hang on there. Okay, this is I like this one. This one's just different. I think this is really really cool. Pretty neat. 
completely different. This is a, I believe this is Coptic. Really, really catching. I like the eyeball at the bottom. Oh, no. That's oh, it's weird. Masonic. Right. <laughs> Look, now about this one. The Well-Being Academy with the seven archangels. Now we're going to, I'm going to get to them in a second. So hang on. Just remember the Well-Being Committee. Because these colors are really important, right? My, remember he was blue in the earlier one? So there he is. He's blue. Here's Raphael. He was green in the first one we saw. He's still green. And we've got different colors here as we go. All right. All right. Here we go. This was Michael. That was one, one uh, impression of Michael as he fights in hell. And then this one. Now, were we, were we talking about genderizing? What do you think? <laughs> do you think we're genderizing or do you think that's a woman? And I think they're working too hard. <laughs> last one. All right, now hang on just a second. Hang on. I'm going to go back, back to this one place for you. It's really worth seeing. Let's see. Uh, maybe it's here. Let me see. I'm going to try this, see if this is it. Oh. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, that's another one. We're going to get to that in a second. Okay, here we go. Remember, remember the um the Well Academy. I'm gonna jump mm -hmm. forward because it's separated, but this is the Well Academy, and this this thing's like five hours long. So I'm gonna do it as fast as I can. Ready? Door Michael, the blue flame of protection and courage. Archangel Michael is often depicted with a vibrant blue aura. Blue is the color of protection, strength, and courage. Michael's blue flame radiates a sense of divine power, helping individuals find inner strength. Okay, here we go. Archangel Gabriel. So this is just... Uh... Archangel Gabriel is associated with the color white, representing purity, clarity, and divine communication. As the messenger of God, Gabriel often appears with a white aura or dressed in white robes. Raphael. Here he goes. Here's our, here's our boy. Join the button below this video or just click the link in the comment section invitation to join. Archangel Raphael. The green ray of healing and harmony. Archangel Raphael is linked to the color green, symbolizing healing, renewal, and harmony. With a green aura or surrounded by a radiant green light, Raphael brings healing energy to physical, emotional, and spiritual ailments. And to invite Archangel Raphael's presence. Archangel Azrael. The silver glow of transition and comfort. Archangel Azrael is associated with the color silver, representing transition, grief, and comfort. Azrael's silver glow brings solace to those experiencing loss and facilitates the process of letting go. This Archangel supports Archangel Ariel, the pale pink ray of nurturing and nature. Archangel Ariel embodies <laughs> the color pale pink, symbolizing nurturing, protection, and connection to nature. With a pale pink aura, Ariel fosters a deep bond with the natural world encouraging environmental stewardship and the preservation of life. Invite Archangel Ariel's presence. Archangel Shamuel. The pink ray of love and compassion. Archangel Shamuel is associated with the color pink, symbolizing love, compassion, and emotional healing. The yellow ray of illumination and creativity. Archangel Jophiel is linked to the color yellow, representing illumination, joy, and creative inspiration. With a vibrant yellow aura, Jophiel brings light and optimism into one's life. This Archangel helps in enhancing mental clarity, fostering creativity, and encouraging a positive mindset. All right, there you go. All right, now you got all those down, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. Angels of heaven. Starting with number seven, the Archangel Chamuel, he who sees God. His mission brings peace to the world, so he protects us from lower vibrations and negative energies. Number six, Azrael, which means who God helps. 
often referred to as the angel of death. He helps souls in the transition from life to death. Archangel number five, Ariel, the lioness of God. The patron saint of animals, she protects Earth's natural resources and wildlife. Number four, Jophiel, meaning the beauty of God. She's the patron saint of artists. She helps us see and maintain the beauty in life and also loves when you stay positive. Number three, Archangel Gabriel, meaning God is my strength. He's often seen holding a trumpet and is the messenger of God. Number two, Raphael, meaning God heals. He not only helps heal individuals, but helps healers as well. Number one, Archangel Michael, meaning he who is as God, most powerful of all angels, the patron angel of righteousness, justice, and mercy. Archangels and the hierarchy in heaven. Woohoo! There you go. So I, I shared that with you because there is a plethora out there of of uh, information about angels and they run the gambit from color to the names are sometimes the same sometimes they're not you notice that right there that Raphael and that last guy's thing was definitely not green he was white he didn't have that green aura he was something else you can go from place to place to place and find angels completely different of uh, who what they're for what they're not now you saw in his rendition as well as the one right before it the wellness institute that they very definitely had male and females based on what they were doing and, and how they were. And he was even saying she, she, she in this. So uh, it's interesting to follow the bouncing ball if you want to go down that, but it is a rabbit hole. Uh, angelology is, and for the most part, what I've seen is that angelology, um, I said for the most part, is has nothing to do with uh, Jewish or Christian faith. As you could tell in the, uh, in the, in the one, the video, there's, that's no, there's no Christianity in that thing. <laughs> That's all about um, gems and radiating um, auras and and uh, frequencies and everything else. It's not about, uh, there's no talk in that whole video about Christ or God or anything like that. It's all about the self and about, you know, having this radiated power for protection and that kind of thing. So just a little side for you about the seven archangels. We don't know about the seven or the nine or the 11. Uh, we only know about the three in the scripture. And then in the Apocrypha, we have at least one or at least two more. Some people say three more because there's one, another one buried in Enoch with the Nephilim. So there you go. All right. Should we jump into 13 just to jump into it? We've got 10 minutes or 20, 20 minutes. Okay. 20. Let's see. It's, it's, a, it's really a straightforward chapter. If we break it up. There's it no, is just a prayer, sort yeah, of. There's no good place to break it up. I mean, just pick one. We can pick, um, let's say, read from one to, um, well, let's read one, one to ten. Who wants to do that? Okay. Then, then Tobit said, Blessed be God who lives forever, because his kingdom lasts throughout all ages. For he afflicts and he shows mercy. He leads down to Hades in the lowest region of the earth, and he brings brings up from the great abyss, and there is nothing that can escape his hand. Acknowledge him before the nations, O children of Israel, for he has scattered you among them. He has shown you his greatness even there. Exalt him in the presence of every living thing, because he is our Lord and he is our God. He is our Father and he is God forever. He will afflict you for your iniquities, but he will, show, uh, he will again show mercy on all of you. He will gather you from, from all the nations, among whom have you have been scattered. If if you turn to him with all your heart and with all your soul to do what is true before him, then he will turn to you and he will no longer hide his face from you. So now see what he has done for you. Acknowledge him at the top of your voice. Bless the Lord of righteousness and exalt the king of the ages. In the land of my exile, I acknowledge him and show him and show his power and majesty to, to a nation of sinners. Turn back, you sinners, and do what is right before him. Perhaps he may look with favor upon you and show you mercy. As for me, I exalt my God, and my soul rejoices in the in the King of, in the King of Heaven. Let all all people speak of His Majesty and acknowledge Him in Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, the holy city, He afflicted you for the deeds of your hands, but will again have mercy on the children of the righteous. Acknowledge the Lord, for he is good, and bless the king of the ages, so that his tent may be rebuilt in you and joy. May he cheer all those within you 
who are captives, and love all those within you who are distressed to all generations forever. All right. So, yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful prayer. It's just beautiful. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. The um, I, Over and over, we're saying this wonderful line comes back and bless Bless the Lord God who give, who lives. Uh, give thanks to him in the presence of the nations. Exalt him before every living being. Give thanks to him with a full voice. Exalt the king of the ages. Give thanks and declare his power to the majesty of sinful nations. I exalt my God. My soul exalts my king. I will sing praises to his greatness. Let all speak and give thanks in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the Holy Spirit. So very much an evangelistic prayer to go out there and say, this is what you have to do. Now that you know who God is, now that God has interacted in your life, you can't, you can't hide it. We're talking about Gnosticism. You have to go out and and spray the world with this thing. What struck what struck me about this was the uh, the ending of of uh, verse six. Turn back, you sinners, and do what is right before him. Perhaps he may look with favor upon you and show you mercy. And the 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 word that's hanging me up is perhaps. <laughs> well, there's no way to know. Yeah, my Bible doesn't have a perhaps. It's just what does it say? It just says then. Oh, that 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 that's kind of more in keeping with what well, the rest of the Bible says. But you don't you don't you need to be on God's side. God isn't on your side. This isn't a a numerical transaction with yo God. I've been you know I've done this and this and this. So come on, cough it up. Right. Um. And so I think for that, it's like, that's why perhaps it's like, well, I want, yeah, perhaps I want, it's as good as it gets. It, what, if, since this is in the Apocrypha, would this be in Greek or Hebrew? This is Greek. Yeah. This is the Septuagint. I, I wonder what the original Greek would have said. Yeah, that's the problem. That's the part of the problem why it's not accepted, because even at the time that it, that it was found, apparently, um, they don't they don't know if there was ever a Jewish copy of this if it was Greek from the very beginning. So there's no original document. That's the that's part well, of I wonder what the Greek would have said though. We can go back and find the Greek word. That's easy. Well I do that for you next time. I okay. will I, Thank I, you. and it's per, which uh oh perhaps Six. okay I, I see it. Okay. What's the Greek for perhaps? Okay. I'll do that next time. I love that. That's good stuff. Um, in eight and nine, let all speak and give thanks in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the Holy City. This is kind of an echo. Of, in, in eight, it says, perhaps he will be gracious to you. Yes. I wonder if it's the same word. Probably. Yeah. Um, in Jerusalem and the Holy City, this, this little lip right here, uh, Jerusalem, the Holy City, he will afflict you for the works of your hands. This uh, is kind of a copy of, of a, a part of Isaiah 60. And this thing right here, the work of your hands... If you go to Isaiah 60 and thereabouts, Isaiah, that's uh, idols. So it's saying, uh, Jerusalem, holy city, he will afflict you for you worship idols. So it's calling, uh, he's calling down condemnation. Remember, they're in Babylon here. <laughs> or Nineveh, they're in Nineveh. Yeah, yeah they're, they are not, um, they're not anywhere near Jerusalem. So he is, no. he's saying that God is proclaiming in my prayer to you that that you're going to pay because you are worshiping idols in in in, in uh, Jerusalem. Okay, let's see. Who's going to read 11 to, let's see, let's do 11. Oh, let's just do 11 to the end. Who wants to do that? 11 to when? To the end. Okay. A bright light shall shine over all the regions of the earth. Many nations shall come from far away, from all the ends of the earth, to dwell close to the holy name of the Lord God, with gifts in their hands for the King of Heaven. Within you, generation after generation shall proclaim their joy, and the name of her who is elect shall endure through the generations to come. Cursed be any who affront you. Cursed be any who destroy you, who throw down your walls, who raise your towers, who burn your houses. Blessed forever be all who build you. Then you will exult and rejoice over the sons of the upright, for they will all have been gathered in and will bless the Lord of the ages. Happy are those who love you. Happy those who rejoice over your peace. Happy those who have mourned over all your punishment. For they will soon rejoice within you, witnessing all your blessedness in days to come. 
My soul blesses the Lord, the great king, because Jerusalem shall be built anew and his house forever and ever. What bliss if one of my blood is left to see your glory and praise the king of heaven. The gates of Jerusalem shall be built of sapphire and of emerald and all your walls of precious stone. The towers of Jerusalem shall be built of gold and their battlements of pure gold. The streets of Jerusalem shall be paved with ruby and with stones from Ophir. The gates of Jerusalem will resound with songs of exultation, and all her houses will say, Alleluia, blessed be the God of Israel. Within you, they will bless the holy name forever and ever. The end of the hymns of Tobit. <laughs> all right. So this, of course, this whole second half of this. This sounds very revelation. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Yes. It, uh, the whole second half of this is, a, is addressed to Jerusalem. So the inhabitants of Jerusalem who have been worshiping idols, they're going to stop doing that. And when they turn from their evil ways, then God will come. And this this uh, rebuilding and this um, revelation will, will happen and make things all, all fantastic. And yes, it's very striking with how it sounds just like Revelation with the gold and the and the jewels and the and the um, the rebuilding. It's all very pretty. I like the the imagery, very lovely. Yeah. It's also okay that the whole Jerusalem is being punished is going to be rewarded. That same deal is in like Isaiah, where he's you know, he's talking about you guys are in trouble, but it's only going to be for this long, it's only going to be this. Isaiah um, and so you know, this is it's like this isn't a different thought, this isn't a different, it, it follows that pattern. Yes. Does Jer Jeremiah does the same thing. Yes. And this is another reason why the book was a little, they're like, oh, this is kind of a rip off of Isaiah. <laughs> it's it's the same, it's the same sort of thing, beginning and ending, the 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 uh the condemnation and then the correction and then the reward. So but I mean when they're in captivity, they know hello. I mean, did anybody not get that this was divine retribution for their yeah. i expect you know they certainly should have. every jew in babylon had a clue yes whether they wanted to take it or not you know yeah were they were they observant enough to do it and then own it that's the other part they have to own it i mean i can say i'm being punished but i'm i that doesn't mean i'm sorry it just means i know i'm being punished they've got to not only know they're punished but they've got to be sorry they have to turn and with a contrite heart, return to the Lord, to quote scripture. So it's it's they have to, it has to be both and. All right. Well, this was good. We're right at our mark. We made it through chapter 13. So we got one chapter left, a little, little um a humble 14 coming our way. Just uh what is it? Uh four, 15 verses, and it's all over. So we will embark on those 15 verses next time with uh, a few dips into the Greek. Find out about that word and any others that I come and across. Perhaps word. Interesting. Yes. We'll find out what it originally said and how it maybe and, and how if it had changed with different versions of, uh, of the, uh, the translations, the Septuagint and back again. All right, guys. Great. That's fantastic. I know you're all going to rush out and buy many books on angels and angelology so that you can become experts. <laughs> <laughs> I myself. Just, okay. I understand how they have, but how they have time for all that, but how do they have time for that? You know? I, next, I think next time we'll be wearing robes and have crystals <laughs> all around. And Well, I used to have those casting balls on every window. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, I need well, to get them up because, you know, this is the time when the spirits fly. <laughs> I just think everybody has to make sure you get the right color, you know, green or yellow or white. So you have those, energy oh, flowing, you know. Yeah, my sister gave us these. And they're supposed to, it's a mirrored ball. You're supposed to put them in the window. And then when the witches come, they, they look at their beautiful face and they get all turned around and they don't come in your house. Well, I got to get me one of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's sort of the theory of hanging pennies in the door to keep flies out of the restaurant. Yeah, I've never heard that one. Does it work? I gotta try that one. 
I so one time we were, we were at a restaurant we were at a restaurant in Winchester and they had a, a a baggie full of water and a bunch of pennies in it hanging in the doorway and I asked them what it was and they said that confuses the flies it keeps the flies out oh my gosh all right well I will try that one <laughs> <laughs> well then I don't think there were any flies in the restaurant that... the door was wide open so I was I don't know why we don't do that <laughs> It was either that or the or the. You look, you look, you look, you look a little uh, uh, <laughs> contemplative, Sue. So trying to figure well, out what... what keeps going. Thank you for noticing. What keeps going through my head is if that really does work. Why does every why does not every barn in the world have, have bags of pennies hanging like the flies <laughs> in barns, right? Right, my right. horse flies. They hurt. Well, so it, it could have been the bag of pennies, or it may have been the bug spray guy who came the week before. <laughs> um, possibly, possibly. Wasn't a, uh, like I know, I might be showing up at the barn with a bag of pennies in the water, <laughs> and we'll see if that works. I'll let you know. <laughs> you do. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. So we're, we're expecting a report. <laughs> <laughs> and thus ends yet another ever so sincere Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> you all have a wonderful night. Remember to keep singing Say You, Say Me until it drives you crazy. Okay. Good night. Right. Good night. Say You, Say Me drove me crazy, but it was out. So, oh, well, there you go. I got to I don't know. I just keep thinking David's soul right now. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Right, you guys. See you later. Good night.